Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RealClimateScience.com. We've all gotten used to red maps like this from NASA showing Earth heating up out of control over the last 120 years. Let's take a look at the history of how this map was constructed. During the 1970s, all kinds of bad weather, including drought, was blamed on global cooling and expanding polar ice caps. Now drought and all other kinds of bad weather are blamed on expanding polar ice caps and global warming. This was the cover of Science News on March 1st, 1975. It showed glaciers plowing through downtown Manhattan. The magazine talked a lot about the cooling which had occurred since the 1940s and all the bad weather it was causing. This graph from the National Academy of Sciences showed that temperatures in the Northern Hemisphere were cooler in 1970 than they were in the year 1900. Scientists blamed a wavy jet stream on global cooling. Now they blame a wavy jet stream on global warming. And this was a very important paragraph from that article. It explained that temperatures in cities were four degrees higher in the summer and two degrees higher in the winter than the surrounding countryside. It's been known for a long time that urban heat island effects cause cities to be much warmer than surrounding rural areas. Cities have been growing and urban heat island effects have been getting worse. That's why cities need to be excluded from climate calculations. Now let's take a look at why the National Academy of Sciences graph only included northern hemisphere temperatures. On January 5, 1978, the New York Times published this article. International team of specialists finds no end in sight to 30-year cooling trend in Northern Hemisphere. They said that the Northern Hemisphere had been cooling at a rate of 0.1 to 0.2 degrees Celsius per decade. And they also said that data from the Southern Hemisphere, particularly south of latitude 30 south, are so meager that reliable conclusions are not possible. There's very little data available, but NASA's published this map showing the Southern Hemisphere burning up since the year 1900. NASA and NOAA used the same data set, the Global Historical Climatology Network. This map is from NOAA and it shows where they have daily temperature data from the years 1891 to 1920. In South America, they only had one station at Buenos Aires. In Africa, they only had one station. There were no stations in China, no stations in Antarctica, very little in Russia, only one in Greenland. Yet NASA has published this very detailed map, even though they have almost no data in the Southern Hemisphere. The Global Historical Climatology Network has another data set which is called their monthly data set. There's no such thing as a monthly thermometer, so it isn't clear to me how they calculate monthly temperatures without having the daily temperatures. But ignoring that, let's take a look at all of the stations they have in Argentina from the years 1900 through 1949. Argentina is a very large country, which is more than 2,000 miles long. NASA and NOAA claim they have four stations with temperature data from the years 1900 through 1949. We're going to look at each one of the four stations. The first station is at the Cordoba Observatory in central Argentina. That station is located in the middle of a massive urban heat island and not surprisingly shows a lot of warming. And as Science News explained in 1975, you can't use stations affected by urban heat island effects in climate calculations because you'll get the wrong answer. The station at Cordoba cannot be used because the heating you're seeing are due to expanding urban heat island effects. Now let's take a look at the station at the Buenos Aires Observatory. Buenos Aires is one of the largest urban heat islands in the world and the thermometer is located right in the middle of it. Not surprisingly, it shows lots of warming, but that has nothing to do with climate. The Buenos Aires station cannot be used in a legitimate climate calculation. The rise in temperatures at this thermometer is not representative of the larger area. 
Now let's look at the third station out of the four at Goya. It has a very short fragmented record which ends around the year 1960. And it doesn't really show any warming from the year 1900 to 1960. The data record from this station is not of high enough quality to be of any use in a climate calculation. The only station they have in Argentina from the first half of the 20th century which is of any value is the one at Bahia Blanca Airport and it shows no warming from 1900 through 2020. Now let's take a look at how NASA and NOAA tamper with the Bahia Blanca data. There's no warming trend with the hottest year being around 1910, but NASA alters the data to create a non-existent warming trend. The way they do this data tampering is through a process called homogenization. What they're doing is contaminating this temperature data with data from Cordoba and Buenos Aires. They're not only using the urban heat island contaminated data from Cordoba and Buenos Aires, but they're also contaminating other stations with these same bogus trends. In other words, these red maps from NASA and NOAA are completely fake. They're propaganda and they have nothing to do with legitimate science. And their graphs are created using exactly the same fraudulent techniques that have no business being used in science or public policy. In 1978, climate scientists were honest enough to admit that they don't have enough data from the Southern Hemisphere to reach any conclusions about temperature trends there. But any integrity which climate science once had is now long gone. The reality is that they have no idea what historical temperatures are for most of the planet. These very detailed graphs are fake. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on the climate scam for more than 15 years. You can visit him, Kyrie, Caesar, Toki, Upla, and the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.